I put a poll on Instagram to let my followers choose a character for me, and now I'm going thrift shopping to get that character a costume. Hello, we're back. You guys sure gave me a workout. So the results of the poll were as follows. We had to pick a species. Instagram picked elf, predictable. We had to pick a class, which I, only having four options on Instagram, broke down into spellcasters, fighters, and sneaky boys. Instagram picked sneaky boys. Closely followed by spellcasters, nobody wanted a fighter. I'm not saying I'm judging you, but... Then the next three questions were about colour schemes. We had to pick a main colour, which Instagram overwhelmingly chose purple. A neutral colour, Instagram chose grey. And an accent colour, of which silver just edged out gold. That was the brief under which I went shopping. When I'm trying to get a costume in this way, so I'm going to charity shops and I don't know what I'm going to find and I've really only got one trip to do it in, I try not to get too specific about what I want to find. That way lies madness. I hadn't made up my mind whether my sneaky elf was going to lean more towards, you know, a rogue or a bard. I guess monks and rangers are kind of sneaky. I don't know. I don't care. I hadn't made up my mind yet. I was going to see what I found. Purple proved to be an extremely hard colour to find. Every purple thing I could find was really modern, but I think I've done okay. I gave myself a budget of £50, which is more than I think you need if you're just making one outfit. £30 more than enough. For £50 I was like, I'm gonna get at least 10 items. This is gonna do me a whole weekend with things to swap in and out. This is gonna be a fairly versatile set of garments. I went over budget. It's been a long time since I've done this. I hadn't made up my mind about what kind of a character this was going to be yet until the first charity shop that I went in. The first charity shop that I went in, I pulled out a purple evening dress, like a deep aubergine purple evening dress with a jeweled collar. And I was like, oh, minor tangent. I've been reading the Cruel Prince books by Holly Black recently. I'm halfway through Queen of Nothing and I want to scream. And the main character of those books is a mortal girl called Jude who grew up in fairyland and she starts out training to become a knight. Minor spoilers, she then trains to be a spy and then she ends up with a governmental position. Is that who this character is? Is this sneaky elf the kind of sneaky elf who turns up to formal dinners and will lie to your face and then slip off the evening dress later, come around and stab you in the back? That's way too much intro. My basic idea was that I was looking for at least two tops, a skirt, a pair of trousers, a dress, and some kind of outerwear. Probably a jacket. I didn't expect to find a coat in July, but a jacket, maybe. Aim for about 10 pieces altogether, look for what else was available. So the first shop I went into had a bunch of really unsuitable stuff, some amazing like black lace cardigans and jumpers that if you guys had given me black or gold or red or navy, I'd have been done in the first shop, but you didn't. You gave me purple. I found this skirt. This skirt is originally from Monsoon. It feels like cotton. It might not be. I haven't looked at the tag. And it was $4.99. This has got a darker purple lining with like a gauzy purple overlayer. It's got a black hem with beads that are apparently falling off. No? No, that's part of a Lego man. Charity shops. It's a bit worse for wear, but it's got this sort of beaded hem with little metallic discs and stuff. Some stuff's falling off. That just means I don't feel bad about wearing it in the field. It's got an invisible zip, so no obvious closures. It's the kind of diaphanous fabric that I associate with elves. It's got some really nice hem detail. It's long. Yeah, it's going to be ankle length on me, so it's going to come to just above my boots. All of these things, the detail, the length, the fabric, the colour, exactly what we wanted. Really pleased with that one as a start. Then we were into the next shop, which was 
pleasingly marked down and I found a top. So this is a really simple top. It's got a little bit of edging at the neckline. It has an all over, it's not a brocade, but it might pretend to be a brocade from a distance. And it's a dark aubergine purple. I am going to take this horrible little bow off. Nobody needs that. I am unconvinced that this is a top for wearing out and not for pajamas, but I don't care. Yeah, it's polyester. I don't care. This top was £2.50. And once I take this horrid bow off, it will be a wonderful base layer. I also found a pair of trousers. These are not quite what I wanted, but they'll do. And finding trousers is hard. So these are more like suit trousers than kind of anything more rugged. The main thing I looked at was that the fabric has this kind of mild texture to it. So it's got a little bit more kind of interest going on and the closures are almost completely hidden. There are totally fake welt pockets on the back, but no one's gonna look at your butt. There are real pockets in the front, so that's something. I expect the upper part of these trousers to be covered most of the time anyway. If they aren't, I don't think this would stand out. With the color scheme I was working with, these seem to be the best option for not very much money because these were three pounds. Camera battery shut off in the heat, so let's hope this is the same framing. The next shop had a sale rail. So I picked out this darker gray, just to mix things up a bit. Premium Soft Grandad. It's the name I used to dance under. This was three pounds. And while it's 100% cotton, it's a lot heavier than the other things that I picked up. This feels more like a light jumper than it does, you know, an undershirt. I have a feeling it will also be quite large. I'm not 100% sold on this one. I think it might need some slight alterations. I also think it's a men's medium, not uh, which might be large on me, but we'll see. I'm a big fan of the Grandad shirt or Henley for the little slight button collar. Definitely as a men's option, this is a really good thing to look for in charity shops because you're actually gonna find it. And it looks good enough for LARP kit. This guy, again, I'm undecided on, but it was one pound. It's too big for me, but it's the kind of thing that I think you can get away with oversizing. And it is this sort of loose baggy jumper. It's got a little grown on sleeve, so it'll be wide and slouchy. It's not a thick knit, so it's going to drape. It's not polyester. Well, it's not entirely polyester. It's a lot of viscose. Yeah, unsure on this one. At this point, I was really worried that everything I could find was really summery and I wouldn't have anything for like evenings around the campfire or winter events. So I grabbed this because it was a pound. We'll see if I can make it work. I also found this was also a pound. You may be going, Ash, are you insane? That is a sequined disco knit t-shirt. Or is it Mithril? We've been listening to the 1980s Lord of the Rings BBC radio program, right? And I don't know, I just, I saw it and I thought of the bit where Frodo was like, haha, I'm not actually hurt because I had a secret chain shirt under my clothes this whole time. I think this could do secret magic chain shirt that was under your clothes the whole time. Work with me here. I think, I think I can make that happen. So the next shop I went to had a whole bunch of stuff, most of which I passed on the first time round. So the first time I went into this shop, all I picked up was this top. It was three pounds. It's probably, say that, I've just seen the brand name. It's probably not cotton. And they've cut the label off so you can't tell. It's like a t-shirt material. It's a pale gray with a bit of texture. It's a long sleeved top. It has kind of a slightly higher neck. The standard t-shirt crew neck is tricky to style out in a LARP costume. But if it goes lower or higher, you're in with a chance. The first time around, I just grabbed that because base layer. There were also a whole bunch of dresses that I looked at and considered. I should have filmed these, but uh, the shops were quite busy and I'm not used to this, so filming in public felt weird. There was one thick woolly feeling dress, long sleeves, high crew collar, but it was kind of a high waist skater dress. It had a puffy skirt coming from slightly above where my waist would be. Probably supposed to be on the waist, but I'm tall. And I ummed and awed over that one because I thought it's a nice thick winter piece, but the wrists were elasticated, which I wasn't, I could have styled it out. The neckline wasn't perfect. I could have styled it out. The length was not good. I probably could have styled it out. It would have made a good tunic. But in the end, there were too many things that I was like, that's not quite what I want. And also I didn't really need more tops. If I hadn't found this many tops already, might've gone for it. There was also 
also one that was one of these sort of asymmetric drapey things naturally falls in like folds in a darker gray and again I was like it could work I could make it work that kind of thin drapey material it was very shapeless but fell in folds that felt very elven to me it just didn't quite seem to fit this character such as this character is slowly taking shape in my head this character seems to be a little bit more precise it didn't quite feel right and then there was this dress which I initially passed up but once I got to the end of my circuit I was like no actually we don't have any dresses yet I'll go back and pick this up this dress it was six pounds fifty it's a two-way stretch knit the top is not superb it's workable you know functionally like people look at this and go well that's a modern dress but the neckline is not a million miles distant from what I'm currently wearing and this is a 14th century kirtle pattern and the elasticated high bust is going to need to be disguised but we can do that and it's pretty much floor length it's slit up the sides which I thought was very cool we'll come back to that later and it is this sort of textural grey pattern that reminds me a little bit of tree bark without being overly like woodsy like I said this character feels like they're going to be relatively put together and so I just felt this was a, a nice versatile piece that could go under things it could go over things we'll have to disguise that waistline but we can do that that's not going to be a problem the final shop I went into before I doubled back we'll get on to that in a second was pretty barren but I found this because I hadn't found an outerwear piece yet so this was $5.99 is polyester but it's pretending to be silk and it's this bolero jacket this has all of the features that I would be looking for in a jacket for a fantasy costume. It's a slightly unusual shape. So it has the rounded front and it's got the sort of roundedness on the sleeves. It's got a authentic looking fabric. We know it's not silk but it looks like it could be doesn't have any closures sometimes closures are okay it depends what they look like but it's not got like really obvious buttons or zips or buttons are fine but little buttons you don't usually get that on jacket big buttons are really modern because they're really hard to make this doesn't have any of that it's got this sort of grown on stand collar which is great it's got piping around all the edges which is a really nice historical detail piping was very popular and it's silver which is in our color scheme and this was just icing on the cake not only fits the brief it not only feels fantasy-ish to me but it feels like it fits the character who is starting to emerge it's going to make other outfits look more polished and put together which means that I can put together like a stealthing through the woods outfit and then slip this over the top and all of a sudden I'm I look professional I look smart I look like I'm about to run the court of fairyland accessories I did not have great luck with accessories Charity shops, I find, can be really hit or miss. Occasionally you find one that's really, really good, but in general, belts, jewellery, gloves, that kind of thing, don't seem to show up as much. Or maybe they do and people just buy them really fast because clothes might not fit you, but jewellery and gloves and stuff fits everyone. But what I did get, so I got two little brooches for £2 each. This one's circle with some swirls around the side and some nice little AB rhinestones in it. This one reminded me of, I've got a pin badge of a mushroom circle, which is amazing. And given the kind of like fairyland elf vibes I was going for, I thought that would work. I also got this one, which is like a little spray of leaves with some little, again, rhinestones. They are pink rather than purple. Don't kill me. Elves, right? And then I couldn't decide which belt I wanted. So I got both of them and I was like, well, maybe I'll just, you know, if one of them doesn't work, I'll absorb it into the collection and keep it for myself. There were no gray belts. There were no purple belts. That was never going to happen. We have to accept black belts, but I did at least get silver finishings on one of them. The things that attracted me about this belt it's very thin and very long which I suspect these holes will not go down small enough for my waist but that's fine because I own a hole punch. I liked the little super basic but interesting silver detailing here. I also like that it has a belt end which is a really nice historical feature so when you can find that on a modern belt that's really nice. Because this is so long and so thin I think I am once I punch a hole in it I'm going to be able to do that nice thing where you can seal it up and then tuck the 
end under to hang down. If you have a belt that's long enough to do that, it always looks really like Lord of the Ringsy or medieval. And then the other belt I grabbed because it was entertainingly weird and I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't know, whatever. Was a little bit interesting and a little bit weird. And like I said, I looked at it and it's, it's not silver. So it may not work for this costume. If so, I will take it off the list and just absorb it into my personal collection. I did also think that I could maybe, because this is a slightly wider belt and it's going to be a little bit trickier to, like if this doesn't fit me, I can't just add more holes. That's not going to work. Well, it, it might, but it might work as like a bandolier type thing, which is very sneaky boy. So the brooches were two pounds each and the belts I think were four pounds each. There was a leather belt that I looked at, but it just, it was a little bit too modern. These guys are not leather. I don't like having the plastic version of stuff that should be leather. I would rather have leather. Leather belts just aren't always quite LARP kit enough and there's not very many of them around. They are one of those things that I think people go to charity shops specifically looking for because they're going to fit you and they will last you the rest of your life. So we might need to rustle up some more accessories because that's not enough accessories for a costume, but it's a good starting place. Now, I'm reasonably certain that some of you are going, but Ash, you told us about an evening dress. Oh, where is this evening dress? So I put the evening dress back when I first found it. And then the very last thing I did was to go back for it because I hadn't found anything else that was kind of suitable. I was now more confident that that was the character I was going for. Also, it was damaged and I had to take some time to think about the damage and whether that was something I was okay with. And I decided I was, and I decided I wanted it. And I went back and got it. And then in the process of getting it, I spotted something else, which is what took me way over budget. Also, the two lovely ladies in the charity shop were like, I asked for a bag because my bag was full by this point. They very kindly packed it for me. Kind of wish they hadn't. It took a long time and was not very efficient. Behold, the evening dress. Under normal circumstances, I would not gravitate towards this for LARP kit. It just felt like it worked. This has a little bit of damage in that some of the gemstones here are missing and the ones that are left are a little bit loose. I will need to just secure off those threads and decide whether I care enough to fix it. For LARP kit, I probably won't. Couple of things. This is a very straight dress. It doesn't have a big skirt. I would not normally go for that, but I have have straight cut trousers, another straight cut dress. That kind of column silhouette for an elf, I think will work. I also remember how the other dress was split up the sides. I have a sneaking feeling that what I want to do with this is split it up the side seams to like mid thigh, both sides. And then I can layer it over the purple skirt that's a bit more full or over leggings and have a bit more movement. It's a slight stretchy fabric so it is going to give me that movement. This gathers and pleated detail at the front I wouldn't normally go for because that's a really modern element. I think for an elf it's going to work. The very thin drapey fabric gathered and pleated in interesting ways feels doable. It's got an invisible zip up the back so again not super obvious how it closes. These big chunky rhinestones would normally put me off. I just feel like I can make it work. The one thing I was considering doing as so as I was thinking thinking about whether or not I was going to come back for this. I was considering two things. One was splitting it up the sides. It's a sort of meshy top layer and then a lining material. So you're going to get multiple layers moving in different directions. It'll create a lot of movement and interest in that. And I think that could be quite nice. I think I will do that. I think that's going to work. The other thing I was maybe thinking about was trying to find something to give it kind of sleeves, which may be as simple as a big piece of chiffon pinned to each shoulder, some at the back so it hangs in folds and then some either side so it hangs over your arms like diaphanous sleeves which I think would just edge this into the territory of like Tolkien elf versus modern prom dress and then I went back to the shop to get this it was my last stop I walked in I picked it up I just thought I'll look through the rail again to check that there isn't something better because I hadn't seen a lot of like evening dresses I now felt this character needed an evening dress and I spotted something that was not not an evening dress. They're purple, not pink, okay? I'm going to argue this point with you. They're purple. Did I say how much that was? I didn't. 
$6.99. This dress was $6.99 because of the damage. Most of the like good ones were around £15, but this was cheap. Okay, back to this weirdness. This was labelled as lady scarves. I think this is either something someone has cut up or it's the scraps left over from making an outfit. I was not going to get stuff to cut up on this trip because the whole point is supposed to be that if you don't sew you can still do this. We'll talk about that. So this is definitely purple. It's not wide but it is long. It's self edge edge at both sides. It's only that wide. I absolutely think you could hem that and use it as a scarf with this costume or possibly even the drape around the shoulders. The purples are not gonna look incredible together, but I think you can make it work. So that's one piece. This piece, this is... Oh! This is the embroidered pieces for a top. And then these guys, I'm assuming, would be the sleeves. Interesting. Mm. I'm gonna have to think about that because we might not want to use this in a LARP costume. Oh, guess who should not be recording in this heat? The equipment does not like it. Hope the framing hasn't changed again. In the time it has taken me to recharge my batteries and let the camera cool down, I figured out what this is. This appears to be someone's unfinished lehenga project. That's the front of the blouse, these guys will be the sleeves. Blank side, I'm sure, will be the back of the blouse. I'm not sure what this first piece of fabric is, possibly leftover lining. This is basically finished. It's a mesh shawl with a embroidered trim. This, which I was optimistic was some kind of bedspread that I could cut up. I think this is a skirt. I think that if you did up the back here, yeah, I think if you sewed up this back seam and put a zip in it, you would have a skirt. A skirt with a much bigger waistline than me. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do now. Clearly, nobody wanted this because it never got finished and it got donated. It's very beautiful. This is not expensive. The most polyester of polyester taffetas. And it's got little mirror dots and little domey rhinestone things but they are really cheap and they're just glued on and if it wasn't for all of the embroidery I think this can be done by machine in fact it's so even it, I would be surprised if it wasn't machine and the sewing is okay it's not great but I don't know what I'm going to do with it now I'm gonna have to do a lot more research before I feel comfortable chopping this up for LARP kit if I ever feel comfortable chopping this up for LARP kit. For reference, that bundle of fabrics was 10 pounds, which I think means... Right, so without these, I am within pennies of 50 pounds. I was on budget, this is extra. So if I don't end up using it, I'm not gonna feel bad. I'm gonna feel kind of bad. This is one of those things where sometimes hunting through charity shops will just take you out of your depth. So I've got a whole bunch of research to do. Genuinely don't know if it would be better to finish this off and donate it again but I know not everyone is like culturally down with secondhand clothing. I actually don't know if that's something that anyone would want. I'm gonna have to look into it. Next time in this series, I'm gonna be looking at other places that you can get secondhand modern clothing to make LARP kit out of. If you don't live in a place that has a strong and affordable presence of charity shops or thrift shops, this costume also is not going away. I will be revisiting it in a couple of videos. I'll be looking at different ways I can style these pieces and put them together to make different outfits. So you've got a wardrobe that is fresh and flexible and able to adapt to whatever the event throws at you. There's also a few alterations I've already spotted that I want to do. And I think that a couple of these pieces could really be elevated by a small amount of sparkle. Not just sparkle, but you know what I mean. So if you'd like to see more of how this costume and this character, which we're all gonna have to name this person at some point, they don't have a game, but I can't just keep calling them Elf Ju Duarte. Comment down below if you can think of a name for this purple, gray, and silver elf seneschal rogue spy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Down in the description box, you'll find a link to my Kofi page where you can leave a one-off or reoccurring donation 
donation to support this channel. People who donate get early access to my videos and potentially more stuff in future. Still kind of figuring that one out. I make like $3 a video on AdSense, so Kofi is how I have managed to keep making videos like this. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see pictures of my cat. Dream big and I'll see you next time. Hilariously, if I'd picked the least chosen option of each one, we would have had a human fighter in red, white, and yellow. Doesn't actually sound terrible.